Welcome home. You belong here. Come as you are. These are the messages that greet you at Instagrammable megachurches all across Los Angeles. With services that look more like Coachella than your grandmother's prayer circle, are the lights in the fog machines clouding the truth? You may think California is a godless land full of pot smokers and porn stars, but it's actually home to over 200 of America's nearly 1,700 megachurches, which is more than any other state in the country. In an era where Justin Bieber jet sets with his preferred pastors and Kanye's launched a Sunday service sensation, church has never been cooler. Let's go to church. As a hip gay Christian, this should be exciting for me, right? Well, not exactly. Ellen Page recently tweeted at Chris Pratt regarding the exclusionary LGBTQ policies of the church that he attends. This raised a larger conversation about megachurch transparency toward the queer community. As Ellen firmly pointed out, the damage this causes is severe. The fallout from this whole situation was really, I think that moment was so painful, like sitting there and having to go through the rest of the service knowing that we had to be like, oh, this is not what we thought it was. Stormy is a wife, a dog mom, and a Christian. Stormy's faith is actually part of what united her and her wife upon first meeting. As queer people of faith, they forged a special bond despite the institutionalized tension surrounding their sexuality. They emailed a Los Angeles church called Oasis to find out if they'd be welcome there, and they received a resounding yes. We do not reject people because of their sexual orientation or any other kind of issue that they are facing. Reading it the first time and those first two sentences, resounding yes, all people are welcome, welcome home. And so you take that sort of at face value? Of course. I think we kind of both read that and then skimmed the rest. Mm -hmm. Because reading it now, it feels like, oh, they were actually trying to tip us off to the fact that our sexual orientation is an issue that we are facing. After spending over a year attending and tithing at their newfound church home, Stormy and her wife received a heartbreaking message from the pulpit. We were sitting in service and there's a section where they do kind of promotional video. This specific video was about celebrating recovery. There were very quick edits and flashes of people holding up signs that described things that they had overcome. Like, I was a sex addict, I was an alcoholic. And then kind of woven quickly in between all these people holding up these signs of like how this church helped them overcome, there was one that said, I used to struggle with same-sex attraction. And I know that she saw it and she knew that I saw it and we kind of just sat, we sat through the rest of the service. We were both in different stages of already grieving the loss of like this thing in our life that we really held so dear. It's interesting sitting here talking with you about transparency and I think of the analogy of like, as queer people, we often have to come out of the closet and it's sort of like what we're asking of these church communities as well, just to sort of come out and be overt and to own their stance. Yep. You know, it, does, it, it feels exactly like you what have it to... is. They have to come out. Fortunately, not all churches struggle to come out. It's been said that you find God where you least expect him. And today, God is at RuPaul's DragCon. And so am I. I'm a nun. I'm here to serve. Can I get an amen? Every year, DragCon kicks off its final day of festivities with a Sunday service led by some of the most iconic queens ready to praise his holy name. You know it's like real church when they bring out the tambourines. This year's service is led by Reverend Jarell Walls. As a fellow queer person of faith, Reverend Walls understands the importance of finding an affirming community that makes an example of God's unconditional love. DragCon is a place where Jesus would be. It's a place where the community gathers all different kinds of people and faiths and ideas and thoughts come together. And it's a perfect place for us to share God's grace. I'm in my clergy drag. <laughs> it's something I don't always wear, but I like to wear it here because it's my way to contribute. Because I don't look good in drag. <laughs> <laughs> it is ironic to come to Drag Race and for us to be offering a religious service when a number of queens 
have, have talked and shared some horrific experiences that they've had to endure with regards to organized religion. But I think that's actually, that's actually the point. I would like to take a brief moment to point out that that is in fact me talking to Fenton Bailey and Randy Barbado, the creators of RuPaul's Drag Race. Okay, moving on. The true spirit of Christianity is a message of love, a message of forgiveness, a message of inclusion. And I think in a way it's no surprise that, that many people who are into drag are also people of faith and very spiritual because they more often than not have been persecuted, oppressed, or punished for being who they are. As a result, to come through that and still express yourself shows a degree of moral fiber and moral strength. So really, drag is actually pretty spiritual at its core. What's your opinion on some of these churches who profess inclusion, radical inclusion, but actually there are stipulations after the fact? It's frustrating because I know they will collect your offering, they'll take your attendance, but they won't allow you to do anything. And it shows that second class citizenship and we're told we're all one in Christ. There's no levels of who's better than anyone else. It can often be difficult to breach the walls around churches like this, but I was hopeful about having an open and honest discussion about the mixed messaging of megachurches. After much outreach and discussion, we had finally found a place that was willing to sit down and be transparent with us. Or so we thought. So we were scheduled today to go to a really popular Los Angeles church uh, called Mosaic, and we were going to film their service, and then we were going to talk with them about their positions on inclusion. And late last night, they pulled the plug on us filming and doing the interview, and they gave some pretty vague reasons. But while we were doing research on this last night, I noticed that there was a Twitter thread about this church that had started to pick up some traction. Hopefully we can speak with people at Mosaic regarding what's happening. If Mosaic expected our interest to disappear upon their cancellation, they were wrong. With growing curiosity, we were determined to find out whether this was an isolated incident or a representation of the church's policies on LGBTQ members. One conversation quickly led to many more, and before too long, the floodgates had opened. We gathered a group of ex-Mosaic members who wanted to share their stories. Why do you think that Mosaic is not transparent on the issue of LGBTQ inclusion? It's publicity, 150%. Mm. Mosaic has spent so much money, time, and effort on the way that they make their church appear to the entire world. You know, you have different celebrities who attend. And I'm telling you, if these celebrities knew that they were going to a church that was not inclusive of like an LGBT community, they wouldn't go. They wouldn't go. The first time I found out Mosaic's policy and how they enforced it was when I asked if I could put one of our uh, team members in charge of a section who was openly gay. Yeah. But when I asked to put him in charge of something, that was the answer was no, because he's openly gay. He's unhealthy. On the Mosaic website, it states that Mosaic is a place where anyone can belong before they believe, and that they strive to create a home in the city for anyone who does not have one. But is it really a home if the welcome is conditional? I think maybe because I'm a queer Christian, I am used to being in uncomfortable situations where not everyone loves me and just kind of going <laughs> it's the off the definition of, like, of being a queer Christian. I'm a 27 year old woman and I've been in the church my whole life. And I remember crying when I was nine years old at a Christian camp because I didn't think I could be loved. <laughs> what I found is a lot of those pastors, they're with you privately. They will say, oh, I get it. I love you. Everything's cool. But it's when they're on the stage, when yeah. they won't make that stance. It's, you know, another That's illusion. what it matters. How many of you, while you were at Mosaic, tried to hold them to account or raise concerns in some capacity about their issues with, oh my gosh. I think I can say that all of us tried to stay. Yeah. 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 Um, we all just want to see change. We're That's such a small group of the hundreds of people who have was. left mm -hmm. or have been hurt but it's hundreds of people who are terrified to speak out mm -hmm. because you get blocked, you get unfollowed, you get rumors spread about you. <laughs> I think for so long I was so 
angry at myself for believing them. I was like, that's not the person I am. I'm not a homophobic person. I'm not somebody who slut shames. I'm not. Mm. How did I yeah. get involved in this? Mm -hmm. It's being trusting is not a fault. Mm -hmm. And that it is unkind that they have been lying to people. Um, and I think if I had to say something to the church, I would probably say you told us we were leaders. We are leaders and we're sitting here and we're telling you there's something wrong and we're, we think you need to change it. So where do we go from here? How can we engage in a thoughtful discourse if only one side is coming to the table? This lack of clarity not only stifles conversation, but it deceives a community that has long been abused by religion. To belong is to be included, to be allied to. It is not to be lied to, to be condemned by, or to be cast aside. The good news is that churches do not have a monopoly on community. Fellowship isn't exclusively found in a pew or a hipster Jesus rock concert. We are the church, and you are welcome here. Thank you so much for watching Refinery29. For more videos, click here, and to subscribe, click here.